another my camera just cut off in the middle of a sentence so the shot might look a little weird but whatever where was I I think we were talking about one of the reasons that you would want to do back to school stem challenges at the beginning of your school year so today I'm going to give you two reasons that are closely related the first is that they're very engaging, so what better way to start the school year than by having kids excited about coming to school. The second is, during back to school, you know those first couple of weeks, you are often doing a lot of assessment. Um, sometimes kids are getting pulled for self-testing and other types of things like that. So rather than do a formal second iteration of some of these challenges, what you can do is, during that time where small groups are getting pulled out or you're working with students one-on-one, -on -one, Students can be sort of tinkering and modifying their designs once they've already been through the first iteration. So this is a great activity because they're going to be naturally engaged in it and they hopefully will not be coming over and interrupting the formal assessments that you're taking of the other students. Can you see how excited I am right now? Challenge three of five is Apple Annihilator. The basic premise of this one is the students are going to be building a wrecking ball using an apple and school supplies. Let's take a closer look at the materials. I discussed the details of the STEM Challenge Cycle in the Apples Aloft video. You can click on the STEM Challenge Cycle title above now and it will take you to that section of Apples Aloft. So this challenge is going to take about 90 minutes again and you can break that up over a couple of days if you like. And one of the things you want to think about ahead of time is where you're going to have the students build. Will you have them build their wrecking ball directly onto their desk or table? Will you have them connect to the floor? Or I, what I like to do is um, if you have cardboard scraps or boxes just lying around, I prefer to use that as a base just because then it's portable, uh, which makes things a lot easier. So uh, one other thing you need to think about is whether or not you want to be testing for total annihilation, meaning mark knocking down as many markers as you can, or if you're going to be going for accuracy. So let's do a first test going for annihilation and we'll see how this design does. Uh, when you are having the students do this, you wanna make sure that you tell them that they can choose the angle that they let go of the apple, as long as it's level with the tallest point of their design or lower, it can't be up above. So, and another thing is you wanna measure from when the apple is hanging, just loose, from the apple to the first marker needs to be at least two inches. So let's give it a little test. Okay, so for the accuracy test, you want to see if you can hit just one of the markers and none of the others. So if you have um, younger students, you might want to uh, just choose one, uh, but they have to tell you which one that they want to hit before they go. And if you have older students, I like to make them try to do all three, uh, but you have to reset after each one, of course. So I'm going to aim for orange. Nice. So I'll reset. This time I'm going to aim for a yellow. Nice. And this time I'm going to aim for pink only. Oh, I didn't do enough of an angle. Enough of a pull. Oh, that's a fail on that one because I got the pink that I also got when I did not intend. So you might recall that in the Apples Aloft challenge, I said you might want to pair uh, Apple Annihilator and Apples Aloft because you've got a tower and you've got a wrecking ball and those things go together really well. So this is an opportunity for students to try to knock down their towers using their wrecking balls. So whichever one you do first, you either need to store it and wait for the other challenge or you want to do these challenges back to back. Okay, so as far as other standards you can incorporate other than the engineering standards for next-gen science standards, it's a lot of standards all at once, um, Newton's laws of motion factor into this beautifully again. So if you have third grade, fifth grade, or middle school, you want to check out your uh, physical science standards. And if you are a single subject teacher, check out whatever standards you can that might go along with this challenge. If you are a self-contained teacher, you need to look for your cross-curricular connections. The more you can get out of a challenge, the better. So there you have it. You have all the basics you need in order to conduct this challenge in your classroom. 
And if you'd like to know more or you want to save yourself time and energy and hassle of planning and prep, check out the resource. This resource is a great deal. It's going to save you a bunch of time and ensure you get the most out of implementing this challenge. Just a reminder, the grade levels are set for 2nd through 8th because this resource contains modifications for grades 2 through 8. You'll get aligned next-gen science standards for engineering and physical science. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results, and cross-curricular extension suggestions. You'll find a materials list as well as criteria and constraints list, which is editable so you can tailor the challenge to your students. Plus, you'll get bowling pin setup templates to help students set up the markers to test for annihilation and accuracy. For student handouts, there are two versions, four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find a set of group discussion questions. In the extension handouts, you'll find task card templates for student-made questions related to the challenge. Use them for a game of Scoot, a center for early finishers, or an option for subplans. You'll also get process flow templates. This resource is available individually and as part of a discounted bundle. Links can be found in the description below the video. Okay, I know your kids are going to love this challenge. I think that I could not count or tell you how many times I have done this in the last couple of days. Oh, and it just does not get old. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Next week, I'm going to be going over challenge four, which is called Apple Ally. See you next week.